Hello, good evening. Welcome back to me in the... Hi. Uh, welcome back to me in the garage. So let's get going with the 365. Um, I'm just going to do like the initial inspection stuff on this. So um, I'm just going to mainly do all the things I would do normally before we do this sort of work. So just plug out uh, and I'm going to do a compression test and a squish test. So I'm just going to keep you along real time just for the ride really. Hopefully uh, this video will help you in some way. Um, and yeah, we'll learn something. If I can remember where I put my compression tester. I put it in one of those safe places. There she is. So I've used a couple of compression testers. Something I read online somewhere said to use one of these ones with the pressure gauge in the end, like that. Don't know if you can just get it so you can focus. But yeah, see how that one's got a pressure gauge in the end. Um, I found it a bit more reliable. So let's screw her in. Just finger tight. I'm just going to put it on the floor and give it a few pulls. So you'll probably hear that. So actually the compression isn't quite as good as I'd have thought. So we are at 100, well maybe actually 110, 110, 120, 130, just coming up to 130. Let's see if I, I can't pull it on the bench really, so I'll give it another couple of pulls. See if it comes up anymore. No, she's putting sitting pretty solidly there at 130. So 130, 150 and above to me is a healthy saw. This saw runs fine, but it's done a lot of work with me and it wasn't exactly new when I got it. So um, I think it's gonna need that pop-up piston and really a new set of rings. So if I wasn't gonna tune this, I think all you'd need to do really would be to replace the, well, really only just the rings, but you might as well really replace the piston and the rings if you're going in there to do that. So the, with that done, so yeah, 130 is on the lower end. The saw runs fine, um, but you know, what you find with that is they just really don't run as well as they could. So I've got my solder. As you can see, the end is flattened from um, already being used. If I can get you to focus on that. If you're not familiar, this is, um, you just flatten the end between the piston and the, piston and the top. So what I will do is just cut the end of that off. Now we've got a fat end and we'll stick that in there. Stretch it out a little bit, bring it under here so you can see what's going on a bit. I just tend to... Pull it over. That's showing up as about 43 thou. That wasn't the best one there. So we'll do, we'll do a few little checks. Just cut another off. Check it again. Check it at the back this time. We'll bend it under. Bend it back on itself. See if we can get a better reading. So 
So yeah, this one is definitely quite loose really because it's pretty easy to pull over. This is quite thick solder. And if it's going to, I don't know if you can see, it's just flattened there. Can you see if I pull that up? Maybe it'll let you see. So it's just flattened it between the top of the piston and the squish. So similar results to what we had a minute ago. 43, 43 and a half thou. Which is quite big. Really, on a 65, 70cc saw, most people say to aim for 25-ish thou. Um, you could go a little bit more. I'll just do one more to check. Um, Twenty-five-ish thou is the sort of number to aim for. You can get closer to twenty, but um, yeah, most people say about twenty-five. I've done a couple of seventy cc saws at seventy, at uh, twenty thou or thereabouts, uh, and they're fine. So there we go. That was a little bit more, not an exact exact science, but yeah. That's coming out in that 44, 43 thou range again. So I'm pretty sure that's good. The good news about that sort of size range is it gives us lots and lots of room to work with um, with regards to taking the, the base gasket out. So base gasket delete on one of these will normally take off 10 or 15 thou, um, which is pretty good. So I suppose I'll just get into the disassembly a bit now. As you can see, this air filter is not the best. Um, I need to get a proper Husky filter for this again. These are really easy to take apart. Obviously, I've taken the top of the filter off already. Um, we take that off. What I tend to do is take that off and then use that as a little case to put all the bits in. So we take that off. Just take a screwdriver. Let's get a bit of a nicer screwdriver. See, I'm pretty pleased with that. 43 thou means there's plenty of scope there to do a base gasket delete and up the compression that way. Also gives you a little bit more intake timing. And then with uh, the pop-up piston, that'll give us even more. So as I showed you on the last video, I've got a stock John Surer 2165 here which I've measured before has got more compression. I think that's more in the 140, 150 range. I did some cutting with it recently and it runs really nicely. So I'm gonna use that as my baseline saw to compare this to. Most tuners say that um, somewhere around the 180 mark for compression is good. So we'll look forward to seeing what we can get this one back up to. Um, I'm quite interested to see it myself actually so that's all that done that's that off these modern saws are so easy so nice to do really um i'll put that back in there because what i'm going to do now is give this a bit of a blow off and i'll pause you and then you can have a look through it so yeah just paused you a minute there just to go and clean everything off or give everything a quick blow out, not a mega clean um but uh, give everything a quick blow out so if I just sort of lift, hold it up to the camera, you can see the general layout of the 365 there. Big 48 for 48 mil bore. Uh, this is an original Marla piston, as you can see there. Uh, sorry, Marla cylinder. Um, oh, we exhaust complete, oh, completely stock saw. So yeah, I think I will leave this video here. We're just at the 10 minute mark. Um, the next video you see, um, I'll pull all this apart so I will basically undo these four bolts, free off these bits here um, and just pull all this off and then we'll have a good look at the piston and the cylinder. Um, and then the one after that will probably be putting a new piston on um, and a little bit of how I, I wouldn't call it porting because I won't change the port timing, but improve the flow of the cylinder. Um, and then we'll do a, like a reassembly video and yeah, maybe a muffler mod video or something after that. So yeah, give us a like and a subscribe if you've made it this far, thank you very much. Uh, if you've got any questions or you want me to look at anything particularly in here or how to address stuff um, as I'm going through, then let me know. 
Thanks very much for watching.